to you, Kenny. In this video, we're gonna talk about diagnosing hybrid and electric vehicles. And if you read the codes, let's say you're reading the codes with a Eucanic scanner, you go to the BMS or the battery management system, and you uh, you might get a fault code that says pre-charge too long. Now the code can change and be different depending on the vehicle manufacturer, but basically what the code is saying is pre-charge thing too long. So I want to kind of explain what pre-charge does and why it's necessary and then kind of uh, what could be causing that. So the first thing is, as far as a wide pre-charge um, is required is because these, um, the high voltage battery, uh, it might be 120 volts or whatever, whatever the vehicle uses for the high voltage. Uh, before you turn, or at the moment you turn on the ignition, it powers on the rest of the hybrid system. It has inside, uh, here we have a, um, uh, the inside the hybrid battery, there's what's called contactors. And these contactors is um, similar to a, a relay, but it's supposed to handle much higher currents. It connects the battery to the rest of the system. Now, if you don't pre-charge, so there's the battery and then there's the circuit, the hybrid systems, all these components that go around, and electricity current comes back here. If you have zero voltage on this side and high voltage on the other side, you're gonna end up with really um, uh, sparks on those contactors and it, they can end up welding. It's the same as like when you have a, a fully charged battery and you, you, connect, uh, you connect jumper cables to a car that's completely dead, you end up with those big sparks because the 12 volt battery is feeding a completely dead circuit that's drawing a lot of current and uh, those sparks are not good you don't want to have sparks in here you don't want these contacts to get welded together that can be dangerous uh, so what we do the pre-charge does is um, charges up this side of the circuit so when the contactors connect there's high voltage on both ends and since there's high voltage on both ends there's no sparks caused there so now the, the way that pre-charge works is there's an inline resistor basically and very little current um, that's applied. Uh, well, current is, is gonna be this, um, it is gonna be low, but voltage is gonna be the same as uh, what's the voltage of the high voltage system or close to it, usually up to, uh, if let's say if the high voltage system is 120 volt, you're matching that voltage up to about 95% or so. Uh, you have the contactors that, uh, this is the small contactors. This is not the main one, this is the pre-charged one. You have the main contactors here, but the pre-charged are gonna turn on initially, power up the rest of this with um, very little current, but the same voltage basically, close to the same voltage as a high voltage battery. And then now we have same voltage on both sides. These contactors connect and there's no sparks. And now this whole process uh, happens in uh, usually in less than a second or so, and basically be about 700, 800 milliseconds, depends whatever the manufacturer has uh, programmed the module or the BMS to look for. If it's above that, uh, if it takes longer to bring this side of the circuit to the high voltage, then the BMS is gonna throw a fault code that pre-charge is taking too long. Now, as far as what could go wrong, well, this right here is also a small relay. These contact, uh, contacts here can basically kind of wear out um, and uh, they can get bent from being used to too long. So the battery itself can fail, but it doesn't always have to be the battery. It's if you got an issue with the DC DC converter, for example, um, that's not that can cause issues on this side of the circuit. So if, when you're trying to energize it with 100. Uh, 20 volts or whatever the high voltage system is then uh, you're not reaching that voltage quickly so the, 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 the BMS is going to compare the two voltages and tell you that pre-charge is taking too long but it could be any of these components that go bad uh, the pre-charge can be very tricky to diagnose and figure out because practically you might not have a code on this uh, any of these units but there is some uh, there's an internal issue with them that they're the circuit is not charging, it's not allowing to, um, to charge up or something is going wrong with them. So one way is to uh, remove the components and test them. 
A couple of things you can do is you can check, of course check the resistance, uh, make sure you don't have open circuit on, on the high, high voltage end. And you can also check the resistance between uh, the, one of the high voltage terminals, for example, and the ground. That should be actually um, really high resistance because the high voltage system is completely isolated, separated from the ground of the vehicle. So you shouldn't have any current flow there. But um, that's it. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's it. As far as uh, it goes with a pre-charge error and it can affect all makes and models, we have an article that goes more in depth into the possible causes but uh, diagnosing a pre-charge issue is going to be challenging uh, for even the most trained and experienced technician thank you for watching you can where you can be the mechanic